Benjamin.computer. In this video, we're going to have a quick look at how to make a small FPGA board that can do some basic VGA graphics. We're going to start with how we attach a BGA chip to a board that we've designed ourselves and how we bake it and test it. Let's start with the board itself. This is one that I designed fairly early on in KiCad. I then sent off to Wash Park for fabrication. The next step is to get some sort of stencil made so that we can apply the solder paste. I'm using a mylar stencil here that I picked up from Hobbytronics. Normally you'd go for a metal stencil, and those are much much nicer, but they do cost a bit more, and since we're only doing one board, it makes sense to just use a the cheapest stencil we can get. We're only going to actually use the circular bits for the FPGA. Most of this board I'm actually going to solder by hand. The circular cutouts are actually quite strong, um, whereas some of the more rectangular cuts tend to wobble a little bit. So then, we're going to need some solder paste. This is one that I purchased off eBay as I recall. Seems fairly straightforward. It's one of the weirdest things that I keep in my fridge. It's important to keep this cold when you're not using it, apparently. I'm still not quite sure why. It comes with a plunger and also a little syringe tip and a, or a variety of syringe tips. Next step is to align the Mylar template, our Lufo stencil, with the actual PCB. I've tried a few methods here. Sometimes a little bit of blue tack helps to hold it down, otherwise you can just hold it with your fingertips. Since we're only doing the one part, it's not terribly difficult. The next thing to do is then squeeze out the solder paste from the syringe all over the bits that you want to do. I use a bit of a takeaway plastic tub to scrape over the solder paste once it's in position. So you get enough spread over evenly and then scrape it across the part that you're interested in. This seems to work rather well, though it can be quite fiddly if it goes wrong and you don't hold things in place enough. The final result doesn't look too bad. Most of the solder is in the right place, although there's one little spot on the centre of the BGA where there's a bit missing. I can tidy that up using the solder syringe uh, reasonably easily. The next bit though that is particularly difficult is actually putting the part over the top of the solder paste region. We want to drop it so that it lands in exactly the right spot. Thankfully on the PCB there's a couple of guide marks. I found using tweezers to be too difficult and in the end just used my fingers. Got it as low as I could and then just gently let go till it sat in place. The next step is to reflow the solder. What we're trying to do here is essentially bake the PCB in an oven. Some people actually use toaster ovens for this but I'm using the classic T962 cheapest chips all the way from somewhere in China soldering oven. It's not the best in the world, but it is reasonably inexpensive. For this project I've not really had too much of a problem with it, so for me it's fine. This next section I'm just going to speed up. This is definitely a lot faster than it normally goes. But what's happening here is we pick a particular heating profile. So do you ramp up the heat really quickly? Do you let it sit at a particular temperature for a while before cooling it? Do you cool it straight down or in steps? You can choose a basic graph from the ones in the menu or you can define one yourself. It's a little bit difficult because the buttons don't really work too well on this particular model. I guess you get what you pay for, right? When the reflowing is done we get a little alarm and we can open the tray and wow it looks like the oven has totally changed this PCB. <laughs> I'm sorry about this a little, I didn't have footage for the earlier part of this so I've had to splice it in with a later prototype but trust me it's all more or less the same thing. We can take a closer look at the board and it looks to me as if the FPGA has properly stuck down. It hasn't moved or become uneven in the baking process so that's grand. There's a smaller chip just to the top right of the FPGA. This is a TMDS chip that deals with the HDMI signals that we might be using in the future. I think it's worth pointing out that even when you double and triple check these things you can make mistakes. The first is the oscillator at the bottom of this image, sort of just below the RAM chip and to the, below the FPGA. You can see I've had to use wire because it turned out the footprint was actually mirrored 
Um, I forgot to turn it around when I did the design. More obviously, perhaps on the other side of the board, you can see all the wires and the header popping out. That's because the JTAG connector that we used to program the FPGA was the wrong pitch. The next step is to check that all the power rails are working correctly, and I can do that with my voltmeter easy enough. Once that's done, we need to do the Hello World of Hardware flashing LED. At the top here, we've got the user LED, which is flashing. We can program a simple program using our JTAG connector at the bottom right there. And in addition, we can test that we can do some input by holding down the user button at the top, which stops the light from flashing. So therefore, we've got basic input and output, and we can program the device. Now for some actual graphics output. I'm using the VGAP mod from Digilent here. I'm going to program it with the JTAG connector again, using some software from my good friend Will's website, Project F, link in the show notes. Here we see it all wired up, and as we follow the VGA cable around, we get some nice animated squares on a screen. Brilliant! An awful lot of the work for this was done by Will Green of the Project F website, a good friend of mine who's worked really hard on making this happen. Although the animation looks basic and it's just some squares, I guess, on the screen, we can now pretty much do anything with this small board and a simple screen. So watch this space for some more fancy FPGA graphics. Cheers, my dears.